Don't we love roses? Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I am sharing a gorgeous new layering stamp set from Gina K Designs called Modern Roses. I love how easy this stamp set is to work with, plus I'm going to share a few tips with you for how to get a little extra dimension in your stamped images. To see that card project, stick around. It's coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'll be using to create my card today. And this is the Modern Roses from Gina K Designs. And this is a cool multi-step modern funky rose design. You've got extra little roses and leaves, leaves, leafery. Can we say leaves? Leaves. Leaves as well. There are dyes that you can add to cut those things out. There are dies for each of the greetings as well. I've got a selection of inks here from Gina. I've got some heavy base weight white cardstock and I've got a really small little blending brush that I'm going to use to try to add a little shade and dimension to my roses while I'm stamping. So let's get started with the stamping of the roses. I'm going to take this first image off of the sheet and just place it right in the middle for this card. And I'm going to pick this up like that. First though, yeah, this will be great. Okay, we're gonna pop it right here. And I've got a grip mat in here holding my cardstock in place. And I'm going to start with the lightest color. So this is the light carnation. And I'm gonna ink up my stamp really well and stamp this a couple times just to get that first layer of color. Bring this down and I'm gonna use my little stamp, stamp and bug to add pressure to the misty door and work my way around. Oh, can I hit that right there? I'm gonna do this a second time as well. So that is a layer one of my flower. I actually don't need to worry about cleaning this off because I'm going to bring in the medium carnation. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the dark carnation yet, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ink up this brush. See, I like this brush because it's so small. You can also do this with a corner of a blending brush. And I'm just going to tap on color in the center of each of these, just a little here and here. And that way I'm gonna create sort of the blendy look. Right, just kind of blend, I mean, I can just swirl it on too. And then kind of soften it out. And I'm gonna do this a few times to get some color that adds a little depth. Let's see how that looks. Bringing that in and transfer. And it'll take a couple rounds to get that, but it's sort of like adding ink blending to a stamped image, right? And if you've not tried this, it's so fun to do because it's just a little something different, let's see here, that you can do with your stamps. Okay. Bring that down and transfer. And you can see how it's starting to build up depth in the center. So repeat this, right, as many times, actually it's just easier to come right here, as many times as you need to, to get that extra little bit of color. And press. See how that's starting to come together? Oh, love it. Now, if you want, right, if you've got a third ink, and I do, I think I'm gonna take a little of the dark carnation. I just changed my mind. Oh, let's get it open. And I'm going to, now I have even smaller brushes than this, but I'm just gonna use the little tip here. And this is just like the edge. This has a bit of a slant to it. I'm just putting a little in the centers just enough to give even more depth to the center. Okay, bring that down and just press that in like that. 
you can kind of see through how that really is going to bring it out even more. So again, you can do this a couple more times, maybe focus more on the big flower, you know, but the more you do it, the more it starts to come out. And I think it just is a really nice way. In fact, let me see which one. It's that one. It's just a nice way to really bring your stamps alive. All right, moving on to the greenery. I'll just wipe this off really quick. And grab the other stamp. And now I'm going to take this stamp, and it's pretty easy to figure out where it goes. You can see through and just kind of get her lined up in there right about that. I think that looks pretty good. It just kind of naturally fits in there, right? Going up a little, down a little. Does not have to be perfect because we're not die cutting this out. You could fussy cut this whole shape, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my greenery, but then I'm going to stamp some extra roses. So let's get our light spruce. And I just thought this color green would be really nice. It's such a kind of a muted tone green. I love it. So we'll ink this up and we'll stamp this a couple of times. And bring this in here and press. Sometimes with the misty door, I have found you do have to kind of see what areas maybe aren't taking the ink as well and just give that a little more pressure. Okay. Oh, there we go. And bring that down and transfer. And again, you can stamp it as many times as you like, but I like the whimsical look of this. Also, I wanted to show you sometimes when I have something with these kinds of colors, I'll bring in a scrubber block and I put a little bit of stamp cleaner on to really get that color off. With the green, it doesn't matter so much, but it definitely matters with the uh, hot, deep pink tones and reds. All right, so this is clean. And now I will show you, I have this beautiful panel. Mm -hmm. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get another piece of cardstock. And I'm going to take off some of the stamps on the sheet. Let's set this aside for a second. For some extra greenery and pop that here and some extra flowers. Because then what I can do is I can just make some decisions about where I want to pop extra things up or where I want to have some more dimension and really take this one dimensional panel and bring it to life. So we'll cut these, we'll stamp these and we're going to do the same process. Well, I'll do the greenery separate, but we'll do the same process with these roses that we did here and make that come together. Five minutes later. Right. that looks great. I just wanted to show you when you have a stamp that has any of the red, oh my stamp cleaner is very low, you can just use a little stamp scrubber if you're quick. Sometimes it will get your stamps clean completely. Now that isn't always the case. Sometimes you're just going to get stained stamps and they'll be clean but they'll have a stain. But sometimes if you're really fast and you have some stamp cleaner, you can get that clean. Okay, so now that actually looks like kind of a creepy face. <laughs> Oh, okay. I am going to grab the dies and we're going to cut these pieces out. Before I bring out my die cut machine, I think I'm going to stamp a few greetings so I have choices. I never know. You know, sometimes it's nice to have a couple and I think I'll just do all three because then I can see which one is going to look best with my design. And this is also the same heavy base weight white. It's just so nice for greetings. And again, a quick prime. If you got the time, do the prime. Now I will bring in my anti-static powder tool. Powder that up. Gina's cardstock is very smooth. Um, I love that about the heavy base weight white. And oftentimes the powder just slides off anyway. But you know, you can always hedge your bets, right? I'm all about that. Okay, inking it up with the Versamark, and we're just going to walk our fingers over here and transfer. I guess I could do that too. Okay, nothing here is too delicate, so I think this will be 
fine. I'm going to hit it one more time. And then again, we'll just we'll just see which one looks best after we add the powder and melt it. All right, let me grab my folded piece of paper so I can add my powder. I'm going to add gold powder and I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold. We'll just sprinkle it on. I'm getting very low on this powder. True story though, these last a really long time. I've had this powder, I wanna say since I started making cards. So that's 2017, so it lasts. Oh, and those all look great. Yeah, powder lasts. I, I know I've had some folks ask if powder goes bad. I don't know the answer to that because I feel like I haven't been card making long enough, even though it's been years now, but I have had this for years. And uh, I do think it's time to place another order though, because we're getting, well, I mean, half a jar. Powder lasts. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this up. I like to clean off my paper between colors, just in case I do a white powder next, I never know. I'll set this little folded sheet aside, and again, wipe on my surface with my Swiffer cloth. <sighs> All right, let me get my heat tool warmed up and we'll melt the powder. All right, that looks lovely. Okay, nice, not too warpy. I'm gonna grab the dies and I'm just gonna cut all three out and then we're gonna cut our flowers as well. I'll probably cut an extra shadow layer two of each if I can fit that in. Let me grab my die cut machine. All right, I have my intercut here and I just wanna make sure that I am set my little knob here to die cut. I think I'll have my pressure probably just at minus Two. The reason is because it's a nice heavyweight cardstock, and sometimes it's it's just nice to have that uh, extra pressure when your cardstock is heavy. So let me grab the dies. I have my dies taped into place with some pink Easy C tape just so they don't move. And of course, I've got the gray cutting mat, and then I can just put my platform right on top because you always want to cut into the gray mat with this machine. And we'll just run it through. I don't have to hold it because it's literally suctioned to the table, which is really nice. It's really nice. It doesn't slide. And let's pull this out. All right. And, and we have our cute little greetings. Come on now. There you go. There's one. I'll just get this with the tape off of it. Two. Oh, those look great. I don't know which one I'm going to use, but it's nice to have extras. And I also like, I'll show you this really quick. I like that this has the little parts cut out there, and there are three. I'm going to cut out another of all three so that they can have some dimension. Then I'll grab my flowers and leaves. I've got the dies taped into place to cut out the extra roses and greenery. And again, I'll just run this through. I guess I could just come back. My my computer monitor that I look at when I'm filming is literally right behind my filming area. I don't, I don't have a big space here, so we just bring it back if we like. And now we can pop out flowers. Because again, I'm not sure how I'm gonna use these yet, but they're so cute. And you can do as many as you like. Same thing with the leaves. I'll go ahead and cut out these two as well. And then we'll start to come up with the design for this card. I went ahead and grabbed Master Layouts 2. I cut a panel with the larger die and I am going to create the stitched layer by cutting out this. Because as you can see, this is going to fit perfectly in here. And I've got my other pieces here. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to use them, if I'm going to pop them up or what I'm going to do. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this out really quickly to get my stitched layer. Now I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to use this. I love to use scrap paper. 
I'm going to take just a little bit of tape runner right on the edges here so that I can mat this pretty panel onto the gold layer. Of course, I don't need any in the middle because I cut the middle out to save the middle because it's nifty to be thrifty for the win. Oh, that looks good. That looks great. All right, I'm going to put some foam tape on the back here real quick because I know I'm going to want this to have some dimension. This is the Simon Says Stamp Big Mama. It has a lower loft, so it's not going to be as bulky in a card when it gets mailed. Okay, I'll put two there and then I'm going to put one in the middle. I think it's going to dip down. I think it's going to be just fine for that. All right, so now we'll have a little dimension on our panel, flipping it that way. Now I have to figure out the rest, <laughs> which is always the part that I'm like, hmm, now what? Okay, I glued all of these to have a little double something something. But what I wondered is, would it look cute? And look at how, I mean, these greetings are so, so sweet, right? Like a love and hugs. Actually, that's really sweet. And then I could, if I want, take these little friends and just kind of line them up. They're basically the same size and I could pop these up, you know, just for something interesting, like you could do it right in the same place, right? Like that. That's kind of cute. I have these extra leaves, right? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Do I want to put one under there? I think I need to start planning out some foam dimension. So we're going to start out with you. Now, this is a little bit thicker foam, these squares, because I think I would like this to have a bit more. And then I'm going to use thin ones as well, but I don't know. I might have to, let's see. All right, oh, get on your finger. There we go. Is that gonna fit there? Oh, it does. Look at that. Oh, Kathy, you're an over adhesor. I'm proud of it. Okay, this way, at least I know, when I place this down, this is gonna have plenty of dimension, right? And then, why don't we take some thin foam squares? Hold tight. Sometimes it's nice to have extra layers of dimension and it creates sort of this fun visual on a card. And you're like, what's going on there? Well, this is going on there. And again, you, these flowers can be done any way you like, but I just thought, you know, the one underneath will still show if, if it gets caught at a certain angle. But this, this is gonna give a little dimension in places where you might not have expected to have it. So I think this is fun. Okay, I still don't know what color note card I'm gonna do. Probably white, but I might try a different color just to shake it up, because you know me, I, uh, well, I stick to the same colors all the time. Well, you do white note cards a lot. Now here, I could just pop this right there, okay? Now, I don't need to use any of the leaves, actually, if I don't want to. Let's see, I could go, Oh, maybe one there on a thin foam square. What about this guy here? One here. I mean, I could, but it, I don't think it's needed. You know what I mean? I think, I think in this regard, just having those flowers or, you know, do I do it up top? This is where you can kind of play and arrange well until the cows come home. I think I will possibly leave these off for now because I don't, well, but then it could be cute to have, you know what, let's just see. <laughs> I'm here, let's give it a try. Put one there. I've got a little half piece here to go here. Sometimes you don't know until you get them on and that one could be there. Again, because this is really popped up. These are a little lower. It's a lot, you know? Sometimes cards are labors of love and sometimes, you know, it's totally worth it. I feel, I feel like I would have to overlap that a little. I don't think it's needed, but again, we're, we're giving it a try. I like just that. All right, let's get a note card prepped and then we can glue everything together. I'm gonna go with Innocent Pink. I know, I'm breaking out of my, I'm breaking out of my usual routine, but I think this will be so pretty 
with the pinks that are on the card. So we'll go, this is 11 inches by four and a quarter. We're gonna score it right at five and a half. Innocent pink is such a pretty color. It's warm, but it's soft. I, I really think it is lovely. All right, so that's our base. Okay, get a nice score. I'm gonna tape this closed just so it stays flat. Well, I am applying this piece. So I guess these guys gotta come off. But see, now I have other pieces for other cards too. So that's always the good news. All right, let's get the backers off here. Now we will pop this right down. Again, I've got that nice framing margin space all the way around. My fuzzy head is getting in the way. Oh, that just looks like a pretty picture, doesn't it? Okay, let's bring these little friends back in and then we will get these placed. So backers off. And I'm going to actually put just a tiny bit of my liquid glue just so that I can wiggle this a tiny bit, right? Get my connect glue here. I just wanna make sure that I have it where I want it to go. And this just gives those foam squares just a second to make up their mind. Because you know, you know what I like to say, they stick like a mother. So there we go. You guys here, come right there over the top. Right lined up here like that. It's so cute. All right, all the foam off here. And then again, this is just popped up a little higher with thicker, <laughs> with thicker foam squares as we fling it across the world, the world of our card. And actually, you know what? I might bring in my ruler for this just to make it straight, you know? Nothing wrong with a little, little precision. All right, go there. And then I'm gonna bring this around. I'm not 100% sure, I don't remember where I had it. I think it was right here, lower right. Drop that down, bring this up, and make sure that's straight, like that. Oh, that's so cute. I love the offset. All right, this definitely calls for some pearls, so let me grab some and we will boop them on. I actually love this arrangement. These are the gold beads from This Calls for Confetti. I love that there are these teeny, teeny, tiny ones. Oh, so fun. You know what would have been cute on this too is to do some sort of splatter or something. But here, I like that I can put in boop, just a little one right in that little open space. And we'll pick you up. slide over there boop. like that I kind of swallowed that boop <laughs> it happens push you aside for a second and a little glue boop. and then I'm gonna pull you a little closer just so I don't get it too far away that's so little it doesn't need much boop. and that's the finished card project I love how this turned out. The roses are so beautiful. You can see that little bit of blended dimension that you get just by doing what I did to the stamps. And yeah, I think this is a really fun set with a lot of funky and modern possibilities. You can find links to the products I use today in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see more card projects featuring Gina K Designs products, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I'll see you in those videos.